okay good morning everybody today's topic is on uh, buckingham pi's theorem methods and the model analysis so the buckingham pi theorem methods in this pi theorem methods there is need to select the repeating variables and yesterday we had discuss on how to select the repeating variable repeating variables are equal to the number of fundamental dimensions of the problem this is now the condition and the choice of the repeating variable is governed by the following considerations so it must have geometric property it must have the flow property and it must have the fluid property so repeating variables have the choice that is first either it may be the b v rho or either it may be the l v rho or either it may be the b v mu so this is the way to select the repeating vari uh, variable and in this repeating variable uh, the first property represents geometric second flow and the third one is the fluid property now let us see the one example so that you can understand all the steps and how this method is applied so in practice this pi theorem method is everywhere it is applied for uh, finding the solutions of this complexity now in, here uh, you, uh, we are giving that a resisting force r of the supersonic plane during the flight can be observed as a dependent upon the length of the aircraft so the r is the function of l v mu rho and the t so the total number of the variables here that is the r is one of the variable 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 therefore write the number of variables n is equal to 6 number of fundamental dimensions that is now the 3 so therefore pi terms is the n minus n that is 3 terms are required to be find out now the as per the property then as per the consideration in the repeating variables so repeating variables are identified as per the geometric property then flow property and the fluid property l v and the rho so therefore pi 1 it represents as this and the function if we are collected as per the state pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 is equal to 0 therefore pi 1 pi 1 represents that is a uh, in terms of the repeating variable l v rho so therefore l to the power a1 v to the power b1 rho to the power c1 into the r so the r parameter is over then second pi to parameter while selecting first three variables must be the repeating variable that is l to the power a2 this is pi to term that's why you have written a2 then b2 and the c2 and the further parameter is the that is a pi so you take here the pi uh, mu value sorry mu So the rho v l is over the remaining parameter except the rho v l. So these parameters could not be considered. So the first parameter you considered in the first pi one term, second parameter you are considering in the second, and the, the third third parameter where you have to taken as the key parameter. So therefore, in this fashion, you have to select all the terms. Next, uh, in this Buckingham pi theorem method. Uh, this pi term is solved by the principle of the dimensional uh, homogeneity. As you know, as per the Fourier principle, you apply the law or the principle of the dimensional homogeneity. So, in this dimensional homogeneity, so the uh, left hand side dimension is equal to the right hand side dimension. This law you must be implemented here. So, therefore, by equating the power of E M L Q on both sides, so we get that is the power of the E M. on the left hand side pi terms are the dimension less parameter it means that m0 is l0 into p0 and this is the term uh, this term we must be write down here. so then uh, you can be get this value for pi two term same way. and you can be able to find out the value of a1 c1 b1 by equating this parameter m is equal to 0 l is equal to 0 q is equal to 0 And let us find out the this uh, a1, b1, and the c1 value. Similarly, we'll go for the pi two term, and this is the way 
to find out. So here in the first step, for pi one value, you have to derive the final equation. Pi one is equal to r by rho l square v square. Similarly for pi two, mu by rho v l. And for pi three term, you will be getting uh, this uh, k by rho v square. Hence for you had written the function as per the procedure of this booking and pi theorem method. F is equal to pi one f function of this pi one pi two pi three. Then write pi one term. Whatever you are finding the value for pi one pi two pi three, it will be zero. And finally we will get this equation. R is the rho l square square pi of this new rho v l by k into v square by rho n. Uh, rho n. So this is the way to uh, find out the uh, solutions. Is that right? So therefore, therefore, while solving this Bucking and Pythagoras method, you must be understand all the steps. That is the first thing. Second thing is that you must be implemented the terms on a such way that where you will be getting the solution immediately. Once you understand all the steps, then it's very easy job. It's very easy job to identify the function. Now let us see the next part. Uh, this is second example. I am not taking this uh, second example because of the time constraint. We'll go fast and uh, directly we'll look out about the similitude and the model analysis part. So, what about the similitude and the model analysis part? So, in this similitude and model analysis, similitude is nothing but it is the concept used. In testing of the engineering model, so the hypothetical analysis for the model is carried by only the research center. Therefore, the similitude, this concept can be applied for testing uh, the engineering models. So usually, it is impossible to obtain the theoretical solution of the hydraulic uh, hydraulic phenomena, but the experimental investigations are often performed. On a scale ratio of the small scale models, so this is called the model analysis. So the model analysis is nothing but it is the part of an experimental investigation performed with a small scale model. So few examples where the models can be used. For example, ship ship in towing the basins, you prepare a model. Aeroplane in a wind tunnel, you can prepare the model of the aeroplane. So already you studied in this drag and drop theory. About this uh, uh, aircraft, hydraulic turbines. Then, while uh, observing the performance of the turbines, you need to prepare the model, centrifugal pumps, spillway of the dams, river channels, and to study such phenomena as the action of the waves and tides on the beaches, also the soil erosion, transportation of the sediments, etc., etc. So, such type of the study you must be carried out by preparing the model. And you can be able to solve the field problem by consideration of all the properties, the flow properties uh, with this model. So the model analysis is nothing but model is nothing but it is a small scale replica of the structure. Prototype is the actual structure of the machine. So this is the prototype, and this is the model now. So the prototype. You need to be considered the dimensions of uh, the structure. That means the height should be represented as in the LP one, then forces on the prototype as F T, then what are the forces acting in the upward direction? That is the F T three. This is the uh, prototype type. And what about the model? What about the model? In this model, same dimensions can be written at as per the geometric property. Or as per this uh, kinematic property and the dynamic property, where you need to observe the force. So this is the comparison where how to how you should write it. So suffix p represents as the uh, for proto dimensions for the prototype, and m stands for the model. So it is necessary, not necessary, that the model should be smaller than that of the uh, prototype. They may be larger than the prototype also, but uh, actually in practice it is not possible. So you have to go with the uh, scale ratio. So the model analysis is the actually experimental method of finding the solution 
of the complex problem. Following are the uh, advantages of this model analysis by utilizing the dimensional analysis. So relationship between the variable, including a flow problem, is obtained, which helps in conducting the test. Then performance of the hydraulic structure can be predicted in advance. That means the precautionary measures can be possible, preventive measures. Then merits of alternative designs can be predicted. Is there any modification? Then definitely you have to suggest you have to go for designs, and such things are to be adopted for economical purposes and for the safe design. So, what are the impressions behind this? While prepare performing the te test on a model, can be utilized for obtaining in advance the full information about the performance of the prototype only if a complete similarity exists between the model and the prototype. Then what about the similitude types of the similarity? Similitude is nothing but similarity between the model and the prototype, and which means to that the model and the prototype have the similar property, or the model and prototype are completely similar. Only the scale ratio is going to be changed. So the three types of the similarities must existed between the model and the prototype. First one is the geometric similarity. Dynamic similarity and third one is the dynamic similarity. Let us see the geometric similarity. So, what about this geometric similarity? So, in case of the geometric similarity, you need to learn the dimensions. You need to learn the dimensions. So, how to learn those dimensions? Let us see. Is a similar shape. This dimension is nothing but length in prototype to the model. If this ratio, that is between the model and the prototype, so prototype to the model, this ratio represents as the LR. So LR represents as the length ratio. Please remember, LR represents as the length ratio. Length ratio. Similarly, for width in prototype to the model, depth in prototype to the model is represented as a length ratio. So LP, BP, and DP are the length, breadth, and diameter of the prototype. Suffix M stands for the length, breadth, and diameter of the model, and LR represents as the a scale ratio. So the models are generally prepared with small scale ratio in every directions. Models are called the true models. Sometimes it is not possible to do so, and Different convenient scales are to be used in different direction, so the such models are called as a distorted model. So in true models, if the model is prepared with the same scale ratio, and the if the model is prepared with the convenient scale ratio, then such models are called as a distorted model. See the difference. Then kinematic property is nothing but that is the velocity. These are the kinematic properties, or the flow, accelerations. So this ratio in prototype to the model represents as the velocity ratio. This is for velocity. This is for acceleration. Someone has to consider the discharge, and you can be able to find out the discharge ratio. So the discharge ratio shall be represented as discharge in the prototype to the discharge in the model. So that is QP by QM. So this is the way to represent it. So the velocity and acceleration, these are the vector quantities. Why it is called? Because of that, it has the direction as well as magnitude. And hence, not only the ratio of the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration at the corresponding points in a model and prototype should be the same, but the direction of the velocity acceleration at the corresponding points must be parallel, not similar, but must be parallel, and it can be represented in terms of the Ratio. Similarly, for the dynamic similarity, you are considering all the forces. Uh, already, I told you the GP, VT, yes, is the symbol of the different types of the uh, forces are acting in this fluid phenomena. So the G stands for gravity force, P stands for the pressure, V stands for the velocity, uh, we have viscous force, force due to the surface tension, force due to the balance, and force due to the elasticity. Same way. You have to find out the ratios. That is the 
force in a prototype to the force in uh, model. This is inertia force, the viscous force, gravity force, and you can be find out the uh, force also. So it is related for the dynamic similarity. So the in here, uh, the direction of the forces at the corresponding points in model and prototype should also be the parallel. But the ratio is remained the same. Now, very important part that is the uh, forces encountered. That is inertia force. It is equal to the product of the mass and acceleration. Viscous force represents as F V equal to the product of shear stress due to the viscosity and surface area of the flow. Gravity force it is equal to the product of the mass and acceleration due to the gravity. Pressure force it is equal to the product of the pressure intensity and the cross section of flowing fluid. Surface the product of surface tension and the length of the surface of flowing fluid. And elastic force is nothing but the product of elastic stress and the area of the uh, flowing fluid. Now the dimension less number. Always the question shall be asked on this dimension less number. So it doesn't have the dimension. So the uh, dimension less number are the numbers which are obtained by dividing the inertia force by the viscous force, or the gravity force, or the pressure force, or the surface tension force, or the Elastic force, but the inertia force is remains the constant in numerator and in denominator. All the forces are going to be changed, and according to that, the dimension less numbers has been uh, uh, named as this as Reynolds number for number like this. So this ratio of one force to the other, it will be uh, dimension less number. These are also called the non-dimensional parameter. It is classified as Reynolds number. Road number, Euler number, Weber number, and Mach number. So out of that, this uh, road number is very much important, and secondly, the Reynolds number is also very much important in this model analysis. So dimension less number, R E is nothing but Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number represents this ratio of inertia to the viscous force, and finally Reynolds number, you know, it represents that. Rho V L by mu, or V L by mu. So V stands for velocity, L stands for length, and mu stands for the kinematic viscosity. Similarly, for the force number, it is the ratio of inertia force to the gravity force. So the F R. So this is actually F R is equal to F I by F G, and finally you got the equation V by root of G L. So this is the equation for the force number. This is a non-dimensional parameter, so if the uh, it uh, doesn't have the dimensions because of that, we have taken the ratio of the forces. Similarly, Euler's number it represents E U, where is the ratio of inertia force to the pressure force, and finally you got this equation V by root of P divided by rho. Similarly, Weber's number it is the ratio of inertia force to the surface tension force W E equal to F I by G. And equation is V by root of sigma by rho. U. Then Mach number. This Mach number is also very important in case of the um, wind tunnel, where you have to carry out of the drag force and the lift force, and finally you have to select and you have to consider the aspect ratio of uh, any models. So therefore, the Mach number is very much. Or carry that according to the Mach number, where the flow is going to be classified hypersonic, subsonic, or the supersonic. So the M I is equal to that is force of inertia force to the elastic force, and finally you got the equation V by root of K by rho. So the K by rho represents the part of celerity. So the C stands for the celerity. Then model law, similarity law. So the dynamic similarity ratio of the corresponding force acting on the prototype to the model should be equal. See here, the viscous force ratio of prototype to the model. All the forces you have taken this ratio, and uh, inertia comes in a play when sum of all the forces is not equal to zero, which means so that the F plus uh, already I told you uh, G P V T S E. You are considering all the forces, and it will be equal to the F final. So similarly, the dynamic similarity in prototype and the model, you will be getting the ratio. 
to interest all the forces are equally important about two equations cannot be satisfied for the uh, uh, model analysis the equation must be satisfied and model law must be satisfied then coming to the next part about the model law or the similarity law so for practical purpose it is seen that one force is most significant compared to the other and it is uh, called as the predominant force or the most significant force so thus for practical problem only the most significant force is considered for dynamic similarity hence for the model is designed on the basis of ratio which is dominating in the phenomena so already i told you reynold model law and the force model law is very much important in this hydraulics therefore reynolds model law uh, it is based on the reynold number says that the reynold number for model must be equal to reynold number for the prototype and see the significance of this reynold model law it is applied in the pipe flow then find out the resistance experienced by the submarine structures aeroplanes or the fully immersed body and uh, definitely you need to find out this ratio of this renal number and finally got this ratio vr by lr into mu r is equal to the 1 now here and uh, vr is nothing but velocity ratio vp by vm lr is lp by m mu r is equal to mu p by mu m these are the ratios so the similarly you need to find out in terms of the dimensions so it's very important velocity ratio vr represents as vp by vm or in terms of the length you can be written as lm into uh, nu p by lp into nu m or nu t by nu r by lr so this is vr by lr is the equation nu r by lr for this velocity ratio time ratio time ratio can be represents as the ratio of the time but in terms of the length and velocity can be worked out and by using this equation lr by vr similarly acceleration ratio in terms of velocity vr by tr and discharge ratio ap into vp is the equation for discharge in prototype to the model but finally we got l r square to the vr force ratio according to newton second law mass into acceleration you got this equation rho l r square vr square so you remember all these equations then some problems are asked on this model law i am not telling you because of that the you uh, we don't have the time then classification of the model let us uh, look out about the model classification of the model there are the two types of the model undistorted model and the distorted model so here we have to consider the similar ratios in the uh, to the prototype as well as in the model or in other word the scale ratio for linear uh, linear dimension of the model and prototype is same therefore this model is called as the n distorted model means the scale you are not changing so the behavior of the prototype can be easily protected or predicted from the result of undistorted or the true model then what about the distorted model a model is said to be the distorted if it is not geometrically similar to its prototype and for distorted model different scale ratio for the linear dimensions are used for example in case of the river horizontal and vertical scale ratios are taken to be the same depth of the water in the model of river will be very very sm small and which may not be measured accurately so the advantages of the distorted model vertical dimensions of the model can be accurately measured in case of the distorted model cost of the model can be reduced turbulent flow in the model can be maintained and the classification of this model as you know according to the model distorted model this ratio you need to be considered few examples are over there even though you can be asked uh, in mcq that is what would be the length ratio by giving this discharge 1.5 meter cube per second then immediately you can be find out if you know this mathematical expression so this is the way we will carry it out and uh, will finish this chapter that is uh, dimension analysis i think uh, uh, you are understanding whatever i am explaining you and uh, let us stop the uh, today's part and we'll go for the